All right. Let's turn to our Bibles, Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. And let's all stand in honor of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. We're going to have a great time this morning. I'm excited for the... Uh, the it's, it's a little bit of a combination of a Bible study and preaching, so I believe you'll enjoy it. Have to keep up here with uh, in your Bible. But Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. We're going to read this one verse, and we're going to read together. We're going to read out loud together, so all if you have a Bible there, you can read from. Let's read it out loud. Just this one verse, Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. And ready, begin. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for the wonderful time that you've given to us already in the Sunday school hour, Lord, and studying the Word of God. And Lord, for the children being able to study, Lord, and, and uh, hear a, a good lesson, Lord. Thank you, Lord, so much for the church, Lord, what you've given to, Lord, us in this day and age, Lord, that you've passed down from generation to generation and preserved, Lord, a church that we can come to and, Lord, enjoy and for your word that you've preserved, Lord, what a blessing that it is. God, may we not take it for granted. May we this morning open our hearts to hear the message from the word of God. May you do a special work that only you can do, Lord, in the hearts of your people, Lord. If anybody here, Lord, does not know that they're saved, Lord, if there'd be anybody this morning that, Lord Jesus, is not 100% sure that if they died that they'd, give, that they'd go to heaven, then, Father, Lord, I ask that you'd help them to get that settled today. May they come forward at the invitation time and allow, Lord, one of, Lord myself or my wife or somebody, Lord, to show them how that they can be 100% sure of heaven. Lord, thank you that we can be. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life on the cross so that we could have a home in heaven. How, Lord, I know that I don't deserve to be in heaven. I deserve to go to hell, but thank you for giving me a home in heaven I don't deserve. Thank you, Father, for using uh, earthen vessels like ourselves. Lord, I know that I fail, and I know that, Lord, I, Lord, I am not always what I should be, but thank you, God, so much for uh, allowing me to be here and allowing me to be used and allowing me to preach behind a holy pulpit, Lord, and allowing me to preach, Lord, uh, from the holy word of God and giving me that opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and all that you've done. May you just do a special work, God, that only you can do this morning. I beg you, God, I beg you, I beg you that you do a work in our hearts. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. Uh, we're going to go from here, but we're going to back up and read a few verses before that. <clears throat> And we're going to go back up to about verse number 16. So we're going to go back to verse number 16. Going to kind of see uh, uh, what's going on in the story here. Matthew chapter 17. Look at verse number 16. The Bible says, And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of, a, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting." Well, we see a story here where uh, the Lord is on in His earthly ministry. He uh, meets where the, He gives the disciples power to go and and do miracles and proclaim the name of Christ and just uh, and just what it is to have been there with the disciples when they were healing people and God gave them that special privilege to be able to do that. But in their early part of the in their ministry, we see that they they come to a problem. They went to cast a devil. Out of a young man, the devil was, had possessed this young man. And uh, the uh, mom uh, came and brought this young man to the, to the disciples and wanted uh, the disciples to cast him out. And the disciples, and we see in verse 16, says they could not cure him. They couldn't do it. So Jesus, he, oh, he ever got frustrated, amen. I know I did that to my dad a couple times, you know. I, my dad, he'd go, oh, son. So I can just see Jesus. Oh, you faithless and perverse generation. Bring him to me. And so they come and brings the, the child to Jesus, and Jesus casts the devil out, and the child is cured. So the disciples come to him a little bit later after everybody's left, probably embarrassed, because here they claim the name of Christ. Here they're, 
They've been with Jesus, and Jesus has given them the power to do great miracles, and they couldn't do it. And so they probably a little bit embarrassed, came to Jesus a little bit later and asked Jesus, uh, why couldn't we? You know, what, what happened? You've given us the promise. You, you've given us the power to go out and do it. You've sent us out. What happened? Why, why can't we? And Jesus very simply says unto them, verse 20, because of your unbelief. He says very simple, unbelief. The, the problem was solved in one simple conclusion, their unbelief. Because look what Jesus says. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a must of a, a, a grain of mustard seed. I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed, but it's uh, tiny, amen. Very small. And God says, if you just had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could tell this mountain to remove and go yonder and it would go. Well, I'll have to be honest, I haven't been able to do that yet. <laughs> I used to live in Colorado Springs, and I would uh, when I would read this verse in Colorado. Uh, or in Colorado Springs, you sit right underneath Pikes Peak. I don't know if ever you've ever been there, but boy, it's beautiful. You get up in the morning and the mountains are pink and purple. And uh, my wife grew up down by the coast where the ocean's at. And, and I told her, I said, no, we're going to the mountains for our honeymoon. So I took her to the mountains and uh, she fell in love with the mountains and she got right with God there in Colorado Springs and she's never looked back. But, uh, <laughs> but the mountains are beautiful. Well, every time I read this verse, I would go out as a young man into my grandpa's backyard because you can, from my grandpa's backyard, see Pikes Peak just, just, pure, as, just pure as day. And when the clouds maybe come around, it would, be, it would be hard to view. But when there wasn't clouds, you could see that mountain. And I would think, Lord, if I just had a faith as a grain of mustard seed, God says I could re- remove that mountain. Well, I haven't. I, I tried that one day, and I went out there, and I said, Hey, mountain, move! Move! <laughs> And there was an earthquake, and the whole thing moved. And let me tell you, it was amazing to see. No, it stayed put. But God is telling us if we would have faith, if we would practice faith, that boy, things, there'd be nothing that would be impossible. Boy, faith is like that key. I have a key here. Amen. goes to my house. If I want to get inside my house and get all the good stuff, that my wife has cooked for lunch. Not today, but I mean on, on a normal day, sorry. She hasn't cooked yet, I'm sorry. But if I want to get all the good stuff in my house, i got to use that key. I unlock that door and I can have access to everything. God says faith is like that key. Faith will give you the access to God's power. Faith will give you the access to everything that God has promised you and so much more. Boy, as a Christian, God, like, because this is what's funny to me, the disciples, God told the disciples, He already gave them the power to do it. He already gave them the authority to do the work, but they still could not do it. As a Christian, we're the same way. When you got saved, you got born again, boy, God gave you the power, the authority, the ability to live the Christian life. God gave you the ability to go soul winning and see people saved. God gave you the ability to tithe and watch the blessings of heaven fall down. God gave you the ability to overcome. Everything has been opened unto us because of salvation. What holds us back, though? Unbelief. Just like the disciples, they said, God, we know you've given us the, the, abil- the power to do it, the ability. Then why couldn't we? And I find there's a lot of Christians in today's generation that are the same way. We ask the same question that the disciples ask. Lord, why can't we? Lord, why don't I have those blessings? Lord, why don't I have this? Or Lord, why can't I overcome? Or Lord, why can't I this? Or Lord, why can't? And the question is not whether God can. The question is, is, do we believe? Because God can. Nothing's impossible with the Lord. With God, all things are possible. The only thing that hinders God is us. See, the disciples had to realize the thing that was hindering them was their unbelief. It wasn't God's power. God's power has not fallen short in 2016. God's power is not, you know, God's arm of, uh, of blessing has not somehow shrunk 
Boy, the same power that God gave the disciples, the same, uh, uh, as far as the same Holy Spirit that God gave to them, we can see the uh, revival as well. We can see all of these things in today's generation. God's given us the very same promises. But we, like the disciples, have unbelief. You see, this is how you know they were human just like you were. Boy, they were just like us. They had a time where they couldn't even do the same, this, the thing that God told them to do. You ever find yourself where you struggle just with when God gives you a promise and you struggle? Well, I have. And God says, why? Our unbelief. Boy, faith is a great thing. The same faith that you put in Jesus to save you is the same faith that God wants you to exercise in Him with everything else. The same faith that you put in Jesus that you don't, you've never seen, the Jesus that you've never shook hands with, the same faith that you put in God's Word is the same faith that God says, just trust in me for everything else. God just wants the same faith. Funny how we can trust Jesus for salvation, but we can't exercise the same faith in any other area. God says it's the same thing. God says that when you got saved, you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you were born again. Now take that same faith, and put it in your tithe. Take that same faith and put it in soul winning. Take that same faith and put it in your Christian life. And watch God like you got saved. God will bless and do an amazing work. But what hinders us is unbelief. When you look up unbelief in the New Testament, there's some dangers for unbelief. I believe when Jesus told the disciples this, He told them this with a, with a tone that let them know that unbelief is very dangerous. It was their unbelief, but it wasn't something that was just a small... It is a small thing. It's only one thing. But boy, unbelief sure is dangerous in our lives. I'd like to show you why. Unbelief is dangerous. There's dan the dangers of unbelief. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 19. Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 19. Lord, we have the ability to exercise faith. We have the you can make the decision today to exercise faith in God. What are the dangers, though, of not doing that? Verse 19 says, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Or the first danger of unbelief in the life of any person on this earth is that it will keep you from heaven. Boy, the first danger of unbelief in this world where we, lack, we doubt God, we doubt God's power, and because of that, we don't believe. And because of that unbelief, one day many will be cast into an eternal hell. Why? Not because they didn't earn it. Not because they didn't get baptized. Not because they didn't join the church, but because they didn't believe. John 3.36, you can write that down. I'm going to quote it for you. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Boy, the first danger of unbelief in your life, the first danger that you have if you don't trust God is you won't get to spend eternity in heaven. If you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus today for salvation and you don't trust Him and Him alone, then my friend, hell is an eternal home for that person. In Matthew chapter 18, you look just right after that. Verse 11, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. See, Jesus came to save what, what's lost. Why are we lost? Unbelief. One day God's going to look at every person that stands before Him and He pronounces judgment and He, he casts them in et into eternal hell. And I believe the same answer that Jesus gave the, the disciples here is the same answer Jesus is going to give somebody that says, but why? And he's going to say, because of your unbelief. If one day you're cast into an eternal hell by God Almighty, and you ask God, say, God, why do I have to go to hell? Jesus is going to say, because of your unbelief. Boy, belief, faith is the big key. You just need to trust Jesus today. Amen. And Jesus can give you that home in heaven. Jesus can give you an eternity with Him. Jesus can give you that eternal rest. But if you just doubt God, if you put God off and you neglect to believe, then God says hell's an eternal home. Boy, that's a danger. 
it's a danger for a lot of Christians because they claim to be saved. But if you haven't trusted Jesus as your Savior, then my friend, it doesn't matter if your name's on the church roll. It doesn't matter how much you've put in the offering plate. It doesn't matter how many times a pastor stands behind the pulpit. It's about whether or not we've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Listen to me today. Unbelief is a danger because it's going to send a lot of people to hell. Please listen to me. That's why it's so big for your family. That's why it's so big to be burdened about people because so many people have unbelief. They're going to spend an eternity in hell. My friend, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? If you died right now, do you know that you've believed on Jesus Christ? Or if not, what are you believing in? Very simply put, salvation is determined by belief in Christ. Anything else is unbelief. There's not whether or not what you pick to believe. There's either you believe in Christ and Christ alone, or Jesus says anything else is just unbelief. There's nothing, it's vain, it's just unbelief. You've chosen to reject Christ and choose unbelief. Please don't do that. Don't let that be a danger in your life. Don't let that be a danger that you have to face one day, that you have to face an eternal God, and God has to ask you, did you believe on Jesus? And you'll know. You can't get up and say, well, I think I did. Well, Jesus, I thought I did. You'll know. Just like today. You know. Have you been saved? Can you go back in your mind to a time where you realized you were a sinner and that Jesus died for you and gave his life and you accepted him as your Savior? You don't have to have a date and a time. I'm not asking for a date and a time and a place and I want to know what you said and who talked to you. No, I mean, you just need to know when you accepted Jesus as your Savior. You just need to know that you put every ounce of faith that you had and you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Unbelief is a danger. If you're lost today, that's the biggest danger that you have. Now for a Christian, Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. We're going to use the same verse we just read from. What is another danger of unbelief? Unbelief, in verse 20, we see... They could not fulfill what God had for them to do because of unbelief. Unbelief will not only keep you from heaven, unbelief will keep you from serving God. If as a Christian you're saved, you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, but you don't allow your faith to increase, and you doubt God's Word, you doubt God's will, and you don't just trust God with your life, then God, you'll find yourself like the disciples. Well, you're try, you will try to exercise yourself in the church and there'll be no spiritual fruit. There'll be nothing. Your spiritual life will be empty. Yes, you're saved, born again, hallelujah. But when you go to serve God, you'll be like the disciples and say, well, God, how come I, I, I can't? It's unbelief. There's a lot of Christians that, have ne that will never fulfill God's will for their life because it takes faith to do the work of God. The Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. See, even as a Christian, we have to live by faith. Well, that's the Christian life. You're going to have to come to church by faith. You're going to have to read your Bible by faith. You're going to have to pray and know God's listening by faith. You're going to have to tithe by faith. You're going to have to go sowing by faith. You're going to have to serve God and live for God every day and train your children in the way of the Lord. And all of that is done and exercised and fueled by faith. But a lot of Christians fall short because unbelief. They don't quite put that tithe in the plate because they don't know if God will come through. We don't quite exercise our faith in God, we fall short in maybe giving the gospel to somebody because we don't know if God can use us. We don't quite yield our lives to God and tell God, whatever God you'd have me to do, I'll serve you. We have our own agenda. It's called unbelief. Boy, just trust God with your needs. 
Trust God with your life. Learn to trust God for the results. Learn to serve God with faith. Trust Him to do the work. Don't rely on yourself. You just need the faith as a grain of a mustard seed. You don't need much. You just need faith. Boy, I tell you, there could be revival in America if Christians would just act on faith. But you know why America is going down the drain? Because God put in His Word, He said, if those who are called by His name would pray and seek His face. But how many of us have done that this last week? You see, because to pray, it takes faith. To read your Bible, it takes faith. To do anything for God, the fuel, just like when you drive your car, you go to empty, try to drive it after there's no fuel in the tank. I've tried. <laughs> it doesn't work. My friend, if you go and you try to live your life as a Christian without faith, you'll be spiritually empty and you'll never go anywhere. You'll never grow. Faith is like that, like a plant. When you're the plant and, and God's planted you, but in order to grow, you can't grow of yourself. You have to feed a plant has to have nourishment. So for a Christian, we have to be nourished. And that comes from faith. Exercising that faith. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's why it's so important to be in church. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. That's why it's so important to involve your children. Even maybe they don't understand everything that's reading or every Sunday school lesson. But the fact that they're around the Word of God means that they're getting faith. And then one day God will give them an opportunity to act out on faith. It's the same with you. Boy, you say, you know, Pastor, it's been tough. My friend, you stay faithful to church. You stay faithful reading that Bible because I promise you, you don't realize what's going on, but on the inside, God is giving you faith. You don't realize it, but you're, God is strengthening you to live this Christian life. God has given you the strength to grow as a Christian and make those spiritual decisions and exercise and use your spiritual muscles. But it comes from the Word of God to exercise faith. Boy, nothing... I love that part of the verse, the last part of verse 20. Nothing shall be impossible. Boy, we could reach Wichita. You realize that according to that verse? We could reach the whole, we could reach all of Kansas. We could reach all of America. You know why? Nothing's impossible with faith. But we have to act out on it. See, this is what we do. We sit at home and we say, well, God, do something. God's already done it. The problem is, is God says, why don't you do something? Boy, God, would you change America? Boy, God can. But then he looks at the Christian and says, when's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? See, it's not about what God isn't doing. It's about what we're not doing. God's already done it. God's given us the power. God's given us the authority. God sent Jesus. God's given us everything that we need. It's not God's fault America's going down the drain. It's not God's fault people don't have the gospel. It's not God's fault that Christians are not living the Christian life. It's because of our unbelief. Boy, faith could unlock a door for you that you don't even realize. It can open that door of serving God and a door of joy and happiness and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit. But because of your unbelief, you, God has to hold back His hand. Well, I tell you, just exercise that faith. Step out by faith. Just tell God, say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I've not been saved very long. I've not been in the Bible very long. Say, God, I'm not exactly sure all that's, all that's here. But then you just say, but we're going to do it. Boy, that's what God wants to see. See, as a young man, I was a teenager, and I said, God, I'm not exactly sure what you have for me to do, and I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to want to do it. <laughs> because I said, Lord, you may send me to be a missionary. I may have to live in a hut with no air condition. I said, but God, I'll sure do, I'll sure do it by faith. See, God's not asking you to be comfortable. God's just asking you to be available. Boy, just exercise faith. Just exercise it. Just step out. 
Faith is a decision. God's given you the faith through the Word of God. You have the faith through God's Word. Now just use it. Amen. A unbelief will keep you from serving God. Number three, the danger of unbelief. Matthew 13, 58. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 58. We're going to start in verse 57. It says, And they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Unbelief will keep God from doing a work in others. See, here Jesus would have done more works, and Jesus healed some. Because we see Mark chapter 6, verse number 6, is a parallel passage. It's the same place, the same story. Mark tells us the same thing. And look here in Mark 6, verse 6, it says, And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching, and he called unto him the twelve, and began to send forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. But you go back, uh, and it says, verse 5, I'm sorry, And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. So God, Jesus here in this city, he healed a few people. But he could not do more because of the unbelief that everybody had. You see, God can do a small work. In, a church, in, a, in any church, there are some people that, God, that will see God move. And God will work because of their faith. But when there's a group of people, when there's a group that have unbelief, God cannot do a mighty work. You see, your faith combined with somebody else's faith, like us in a church, when all of us exercise faith in God, God can do a mighty work. So see, the danger of unbelief is that you'll keep God from doing a work in others. You'll keep God from doing a work in yourself, but when God comes down and He wants to do a mighty work in Wichita, if, not, if all of us are, if we all are doubting God, there's a one or two that maybe are exercising faith and they're charging ahead trying to go for God, but the majority are in doubt, then God cannot do a mighty work. The danger of unbelief is that you'll keep others from being able to see God do something great. Boy, that's why it's so important for your children for a husband and wife to be in agreement because God can do a mighty work, but if there's a husband or a wife that's in doubt, that's in unbelief, then God can't do what He would want to do in that marriage. God can move in one person's life. God can move in an individual, but God is withheld from that marriage or that home as a whole. But boy, when one person will start with faith, then God can move in that individual. That's why it's important... Doesn't matter who around you. Doesn't matter if everybody turns their back on God. Doesn't matter if everybody says no. Boy, there were a few sick folk that got healed. The rest of everybody doubted in this city. But God says there was a few people that Jesus said, hey, there's faith. Boy, when you in your Christian life, you may come to a place, you may come to where somewhere where you're the only person, but you know this, that God sees that faith. But let's endeavor as a church to all exercise faith, not dwell in unbelief, not dwell in doubt of what God can do and withhold our church from doing something great for God. Because this is the problem. These are all dangers of unbelief, but look at the result of unbelief. Go back to Matthew chapter 17. These are dangers of unbelief. If you're not saved this morning, you haven't trusted Christ, you're going to spend eternity in a place called hell. That's a danger. It's a big danger. If you're a Christian this morning, you're saved, you're born again, but you're not exercising faith in Christ and not allowing God to grow you by faith, you're going to keep yourself from serving God and doing what God would want you to do. You'll keep yourself from hearing, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But then last, you'll also keep God from doing a work in others. But this is what happens. Look, verse 17, it says, Matthew 17, 17, Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, when you don't exercise faith, when you dwell in unbelief, God says there's two things. You're destitute of faith. What does it mean to have unbelief? What, is it, what, is, what happens? You're destitute of faith. You're faithless. Because, again, it takes faith to serve God. That means you don't have faith. You're rejecting faith. You're pushing that faith away and choosing to live 
in unbelief. But then look, they were perverse. You know, perverse means that you twist, you corrupt, you um, distort, or you turn aside. See, I, the, Jesus said to the disciples, He said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. What happened was, as Jesus was saying to them, because you had no faith, you tried to, to, you tried to do my work your own way. You perverted what I told you to do and tried to do it without faith. You understand, that's why churches bring in rock music concerts. Because they're faithless. And so they pervert God's house because they cannot operate God's way. So they try to do God's way their way. In a Christian's life, if you dwell in unbelief, this is what will happen. You will try to do God's work your way. And it'll be anti-Bible. You'll eventually leave church. You'll eventually get a mindset of, well, it's okay to stay home. It's okay to listen to contemporary Christian music. It's, o it's okay to not tithe. It's okay. And you'll begin to accept something different from what God says because you're faithless. See, as this church, if we're not careful, if we don't exercise faith, if we just dwell in unbelief, then we'll drop the name Baptist off the sign. We'll turn into a contemporary entertainment center. Because when you're faithless, you won't have God's result. People won't get saved. People won't walk down the aisle. God won't do a work in your children. God won't do a work in your own life. And so we'll have to, we'll have to make up Christianity. You ever met somebody that goes to a, one of these what I call pop culture churches? I've met some and they tell me, they say, you know, it was okay for a while, but I'm tired of it. You know why? It's empty. It's vain because there's no faith. And your life can be the same way. That's why there's many people that are trusting works to go to heaven because they're faithless. They have not put their faith in Jesus to save them because Jesus is the only one that can. So they pervert salvation and they say, well, there's another way to be saved. We don't have to do what God says. You can do it this way. That's a lack, it's a lack of faith. So the danger that we see, the result of unbelief, is that if you don't choose to trust Jesus, if you don't choose to, put, to exercise that faith, then what eventually will happen is you'll try to do God's work your way, and you'll get a false result. That's what Joel Olstein is. That's what all these other TV evangelists and TV preachers are doing. They're doing God's work their way. There's no Bible involved. There's no scripture involved. There's no uh, truth involved. It's all, close your Bible and listen to me. There's no faith. Boy, don't, don't allow that kind of Christianity to permeate your life. Now the last thing, Mark chapter 6. The last thing about unbelief here. Notice what happened, Mark 6.6. 6. It says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus marveled. When Jesus looks down at your life and sees unbelief, it sees, Jesus sees that you don't act in faith, he marvels. Why does Jesus marvel? I believe this. He marvels because Jesus has given you everything you need. It's almost like me coming down and having a million dollars in cash and saying, here you go. And you saying, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think about that. Well, you'd be crazy. Well, if I had a million dollars in cash, I wouldn't be giving it to you, amen. <laughs> I'd tithe, amen, give my offering, and then pay my bills. No. You'd be crazy. It's there in front of you. It's there for the taking. Jesus marvels at Christians because Jesus has given us everything we need to live by faith. Every promise in the book is mine. And for a Christian to say, you know, I'm okay. Jesus looks at that and goes, what are you, what are you doing? 
When a lost person chooses to reject Jesus and says, You know, I'm not going to trust you, Jesus. I'll be okay. Jesus marvels because he thinks, What are you doing? Do you understand the danger? Jesus says, Do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand what decision you're making? Do you understand you're choosing to go to hell? Jesus marvels. And then for a Christian, God marvels at us because He says, Do you understand what you're doing? You're going to lose your home. You're going to lose your children. You're going to lose your church. You're going to lose your marriage. Dwell in unbelief if you want to. But God marvels and says, Why would you? When God can give you so much, and Jesus has done so much, why would you stay in unbelief? Boy, Jesus marveled and thought, why? Boy, in your life, in my life, it should marvel us to think, why wouldn't we just believe? Why wouldn't we just step out by faith? We all struggle. It's not saying you're not going to struggle, but when you do struggle, let it give you the mindset of, boy, I shouldn't. Boy, I need to trust God. May it burden you to not live by faith. And then Mark 16, 14. The last thing and we're done. Mark 16, 14. Look at Jesus here. It says, And afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Jesus upbraided the disciples. He chided them, so to speak. He said, what are you thinking? What's wrong with you? He says, you know the promises. Why are you unbelieving? Guess what also was a, belief, was a result of their unbelief? Their hardness of heart. When you don't have unbelief, when, you're, or when you don't have faith, when you don't exercise that faith and you remain in unbelief and you remain in doubt... You get a hard heart. That's why a lot of Christians get a hard heart towards God. And they turn away and you never see Him again because of unbelief. Boy, the answer to all those problems was when Jesus said, because of your unbelief. You have a question today? Say, Pastor, why is this going on in my life? It's because of your unbelief. Why am I having difficulty? Because of your unbelief. Why am I not saved? Because of your unbelief. Boy, let's live by faith. Maybe you're lost this morning. You've never trusted Jesus. My friend, may you see the danger. May you understand. May I, almost like if, it was a, if, there, if, you were in, if, there, if your home was on fire and I would come to you and I would beg you, say, listen, your home's on fire. You need to get out. Boy, I do the same about going to hell. Because you're going to go to hell one day if you're not saved. Listen to me and I beg you and I plead just as I would if to save you from danger physically. I want to save you from the danger spiritually. There's a living, burning hell. May you not dwell in unbelief and go there. Don't say, well, I'm fine for now or I'll do it tomorrow. Don't look at the preacher now and say, boy, you're crazy. Listen to me. There's a burning, living hell you're going to spend eternity in. Oh, I wish I could just, just, just open, the, uh, open the lid of hell and just show you hell and let you understand and see those that are burning and that would cry and say, just one drop of water may you understand where unbelief is going to send you. But as a Christian, may I, as a, or for you Christians, may I plead with you, don't live in unbelief because one day you may never come back because living without faith is the Bible says faith without works is dead. Not that you need works to go to heaven, but without when you trust Jesus, there's more to it. Live by faith. Don't allow yourself to spiritually die. Don't live in unbelief as a Christian. Don't live in doubt of God. Don't live in doubt of what God can do. Let God have your life. Let God have you. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So when you live in unbelief, the last and probably most saddening thing is that you displease the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody that doesn't believe simply does not please God. 
Can I ask you, does your life please God this morning? Or is God pleased with your faith? If you're living in unbelief, whether lost or as a Christian, then God looks down with a frown and God says, I'm not very pleased. Well, I want to please God. I want my life to please the Lord. I want God to say, well done. My friend, you'll never hear a well done. You'll never be pleased. God will never be pleased with you. Now, God loves you. But like a father and a son, when a son is not maybe what he should be. And a dad says, I love you, son, but you've disappointed me. God does the same. He looks at us and says, I love you, children, but you know, you've really disappointed me. I've given you everything you need. What's, what's holding you back? My answer is, like Jesus, because of our unbelief. Let's trust God today. Let's live by faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the message. Lord, how you pricked my heart. Lord, in studying the, the message and studying your word. and Lord, I desperately needed, Lord, this, this message for myself. How, God, I don't exercise my faith like I should. Lord, I believe everybody here, Lord, we all can work on exercising our faith in you more. Lord, we're never going to be perfect. We'll never, Lord, have perfect faith till we are in heaven with you. So faith is something we constantly work at. God, may we never get to the point of our Christian life where we are content with where we're at. May we strive to continually grow. May we uh, strive to continually exercise faith. Holy Spirit of God, I beg you, if anybody's here that doesn't know if they died, they'd go to heaven. May you please help them to be saved. Lord, if there's anybody here that, Lord, they know they've never trusted you, Jesus as their Savior. They've not believed on you. They're unbelieving. They've not trusted Jesus. Then, Lord, I pray that they would trust you today. God, for the Christians that, Lord, maybe their spiritual life has been hindered. Their spiritual growth has been hindered. God, may we make that decision at this old-fashioned altar to give in and trust you by faith. May we, be, may we live by faith. God, would you please help us. Help this invitation time. Lord, as we come forward, we make decisions. The pianist will play. Lord, would you please help us to, Lord, make a decision to, do, to live by faith. And for those that are lost, may they trust you today. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. Let's all